future. Um, everybody wants to hear you play well. Everybody's on your side. The committee wants you to play well. They want to say, Rachel, thank you so much. We love you. We love the way you played. So if, they, if you see them writing something, don't automatically think, oh, they hate me. They're writing something bad. No, they can be saying, what a beautiful sound. What a great technique. And, you know, so it's very, very important for you to understand that and for you to be uh, more relaxed about it, not thinking that they're playing, that they're writing bad, bad things. Um, when, but it's just the way our, our, our mind works. We're all professional breathers. I, I, I'm not trying to be silly. We are. I, I, I've read one time how many times a day we breathe. So we're breathing right now. When you speak to somebody, you never notice them breathing. However, when we play the flute, a lot of people are doing this, or whatever. Now, if I talk to you, and I'm in here, and I, and I do this, or, what is that? I don't really know. My heroes certainly don't do it. Any great flute player that you know certainly does not do that. So, we don't have a problem. I was watching your, what tummy you have. Now, you can see my tummy. Uh, we need to breathe three inches below our belly button. Everybody stand up. Everybody just stand up and put your hand three inches below your belly button. Feel that and take a big, big breath. If you've got to fill up down there, expand. Does everybody feel that? Now, a lot of us don't want to stick our tummies out, especially the girls. But guess what? Nobody's looking at your tummy. They're all, all looking and thinking about how a great flute player and how pretty you are. So it's not a problem, right? But you need to be able to do that. So we don't. Breathe properly, not not here. So it's not really a breathing lesson because we do it a thousand times a day. Okay, you you can you can sit down. But we then I have my students do this step out of the Number one with a loud edgy sound and it's not pretty. Just a little bit, but people 
tempo may be a little bit higher on the bottom lip. And you just play that first note and make it more wooden. Good. Isn't that much better? Yeah. Wow. I mean, that's super handy. So we can really, if we just stop for a minute and think about what we're doing, think about the angles that we're playing into the flute, think about all these little things, we can fix these things. Mm -hmm. Or we can continue the old way and practice for hours and hours and hours and reinforce our, the stuff that doesn't work that well. Um, hey, I'm talking to myself, whether it's with the flute or the golf course, mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. And uh, it's, it's really, really, really frustrating. But that was good. And you played in a different way in that way. Uh, yes. You felt better about the sound. Yes. It enabled you to, to, to really be more musical and, and have more nuances in your playing. So let's do this from the beginning. Now, let me just tell you one other thing. When you take an audition, find out where this, who the, who the conductor is, who the conductor is. Find out where they studied, who they studied with. Because in Europe, sometimes the conductors just go, bing. And the, or the orchestra's holding it, and then they come in. So you just hold that, it almost like it's a Fermata. Uh, it can, can be done that way. So, and you, you're not doing it, but sometimes you hear it. I hear that in auditions. But that's not about it. It's going to be a From the F sharp. Taylor, Taylor. If somebody called you Taylor, 